squalls. And we've got, I believe it's the bats. But I'll check. It's not the bats, it's the fat cats. My ram is off. So we're about to face off here with the men's final. The two teams from Prague, LCC Wolves versus the Fat Cats. We're about to start with the face off. This is what we're all here for. This is the two best teams in the tournament facing head to head. And let's see who comes out with the face off. We've already got a scrum. The ball is loose. There's a push. And the Fat Cats get the first face off of the game. They've got the possession, they've got the control. Let's see what they can do. These are two of the best teams, both hailing from Prague. So they come all the way to split just to play their local teams. What a delight. We take nothing away from them. They are incredible. The stitch skills, the athleticism is all on point here. A lot of these guys play box too, so they know how to handle the physicality. A shot, a goal, what a rip. That was pure power, pure speed, bottom right. Goalie didn't even see it coming. That's one of those goals right there that he's such a talented player that you need to go out and be on his hands because if there's any separation and you give him a split second to have his hands and his eyes he's going to rip a high quality shot not every player demands that level of respect but if they don't continue to show that respect or if they don't start showing that respect pardon me it's going to be a long game it's like we said in that in that last game right it's you show your opponents what you can do, and they have done that from the off. They said, hey, I'm here, I will take these shots, and I will rip it in a place your goalie will struggle to get from that distance, from that position, even with a little bit of crowding, and you have to start showing respect. So you're gonna see that defense move more instantly and react to that. And it's a great challenge for the defense. Hey, listen, as every offensive possession happens, you need to grow a little bit defensively from an IQ perspective. Hey, so that, that shot happened. Let's take that away, make them do the next thing. Take that away, make them do the next thing. So we've seen what space can do for that specific player. Now let's see what they can do if they take it away as we see a great skip pass. Yeah, a great skip and uh, a great save there. It was a good shot, you know, the speed at which these guys are shooting is insane. They are receiving the pass and getting out of their stick onto the goal with power and accuracy. A nice little, a little hop and a skip. But it comes up blue and they are now on the, on the transition on the fast break, but a great ride by White. And the ball is now loose and it's anyone's ball at this point. But blue have it right now, but it's nowhere near safe. Really impressive lacrosse all around, both from an athleticism and you just see a little bit more comfortability with the sticks than we might be used to from previous games. I'd also like to call out one thing, and that is the hustle and determination. Every time the ball hits the ground, it seems like every player on the field is at high alert, battling, either giving space, taking man or ball, as we see an interesting dodge. There are no spectators on that ground ball. They are all going for it. They are all putting a shift in to make that team win. And that's what you need in a good team. You know, 
that tiny bit of hustle to win that ground ball wins you games. Ground balls win games, we all know this. And Blue have got the ball now and they've got it in the offensive end. And that was a good dodge by Ben Niskern right there. Uh, got a great shot opportunity, but the defense credit to them was able to step in and soak that shot as we see a bit of a rush shot, but that's one of those, hey, if you're gonna miss it, you demand respect on the very next rep. Yeah, and, and from a, a different player as well. So they're, they're starting to see, and I'm sure they, they these two teams know each other already. They're both local, they're both Prague. They know that all these players demand respect and they know that every shot is gonna be a good one. Even when there was that was slightly off target, it wasn't by much. The power with that shot and the speed that they, it comes out, they have to be ready for everything. They cannot leave a gap, not even a millimeter. The White have the ball now, and they're just slowing it down. We had a real intensity for that first few minutes. You know, it was end to end. White starting to realize, hey, we're going down. Let's slow it down. Let's start, start to control this game. No, and it's, it's, it's awesome to watch. I feel like we're going to see several different variations. Where we've seen powerful dodges. We've seen quick dodges. We've seen skip passes. We've seen quick shots, powerful shots. It, this is a smorgasbord and a great cocktail of lacrosse right here. It really is. White trying to make things happen, but Blue are just keeping them out. Some hard checks. You can't really see what's going on, but it stays white. There was a, a loose ball and the ball stayed white. This white team is looking for skip passes, and I got to give credit to the blue defense being organized and in those skip lanes, because if you're not, they will make you pay, and this game will get out of hand quickly. So credit to the blue defense for the organization and the structure to get in those skip lanes. Yeah, and they have to be organized. This white team, their offense is incredible. Both teams' offense are incredible, and they really have to be on their A game if they're going to keep them out. There's so much threat, so much power, so much athleticism from both teams. And, and these teams are, um, are more structured than a lot of other teams we've seen. They train together, they play together, they know each other, they know where the looks are going to be. So there's so much threat everywhere. And a great goal there. Wow. 9-5, wow. And, and that's something that very few teams can do, particularly in the Dalmatian Cup, but also, you know, at, at any level of lacrosse. The skip passes, we talked about it a little bit ago, the level of execution and the level of difficulty are very dependent on your own individual skill set. Very few players can run full speed, have the feeder predict where he is going, lead him on the pass so that it's a quick, tight pass right to his box, and not only be moving 100%, but to have the stick skills to just very easily catch it and get a shot off. The degree of difficulty was a 9 out of 10, and they made it look easy. Yeah, they really have been. We are watching two high quality teams in this final. And that's why they're in the final. They are by far the best teams here. Two of the best teams in Europe, you might even argue. And it's going to be a great battle. It's already won one all. And I feel like this could go all the way. We might even see overtime. But it'll be interesting to see how this game turns out. I mean, the hustle from the subs. We're right by the touch bench here. And they are 100% speed. They're not jogging onto the pitch. Both teams are running off, running on maximum effort, and it's great to see. They really are, and, and again, it, it's, a, it's a flavor of a lot of different things. You'll see box elements, you'll see field elements, powerful elements, as we see right there with the right-handed player running hard to his right hand and then dodging and then pass, pass, move it for another opportunity. This type of patience we haven't seen as we see a behind-the-back feed, and I'll say this about the box-style offense. Those low angle shots are much better than if I were to go out and take a low angle shot like that, it would be pathetic. I'd score 10% of the time, but some of these box players are so crafty that that's an 80% of the goal time. So contrasting what we were talking about last game, some of these low angle shots might be good takes. Yeah, and the difference here with box is that they're, when they're extending their arms out, they are increasing that angle. Their stick, at the end of their stick, is far higher than where their feet are. So they're extended that angle and they've got the skill and the accuracy to make those long go shots. And they're used to a box goalie where there's a tiny gap in the goal so they can find those tiny little opportunities. And they almost found one there, but it was a good save from the goalie. And conversely, what's been really interesting is if you aren't all over their hands, they are open. 
If you give them a half of a yard, two feet, one, you know, any space at all, they are so good at throwing an accurate pass and making that accurate pass into a goal. So it's a big challenge for the defense. Again, I'll give credit to this blue defense right here, even though they just gave up a shot. You have to be on your toes at all times. It's got to be constant. Like both these teams in this final, they cannot make any mistakes. It has got to be on it all the time. The pressure is on for both of them. They really have to play their best games here. They cannot let any gaps, they cannot let anything slide. Although there, we've seen a turnover and that is, you've got to argue, very sloppy. They cannot afford that kind of stuff. That was a very simple pass, a very simple catch, but maybe it's the pressure getting to them. Rare. I, you know, maybe it's just what, you know, the one or two mistakes a game as we see a shot and what a capitalization on that turnover. That is a big, big play momentum wise. Absolutely. And a great finish. He just ran straight into, you know, straight into the goal, straight into the crease. Obviously not in the crease when he shoots, but the goal has got no chance. He's so close. He's got barely any time to react to anything at all. And he just places it right over his head. No, no, and no chance for the goalie right there, but one of the things that I'd like to call is executing and capitalizing on mistakes. When that pass goes over uh, your opponent's head and you know it's going to be an over and back, we saw a stampede. All three midfielders said, hey, this is going to be over and back. We better get our butts up to execute and take advantage of that, resulting in a goal. If they were just to stand there and say, hey, that's going to be a good turnover, let's go get subs, that's not a goal. Exactly, and that's what you need, that hustle, that recognition, that early recognition to make a move makes such a difference in those games. We saw a withholding call there just on the face-off, so I think he was, when, when you clamp on that face-off, if you're not releasing quickly, he's going to call withholding. You don't see it very often, but uh, I think that's what it might have been, where if he's not been challenged for that ball, and uh, it was an easy turnover, but it's gone back the other way anyway, so it looks like it, it, it might not be... Uh, too much of a mistake. A nice little swim dodge, trying to make something happen. Looking for the inside feed, exactly where they want to be, and they're keeping the ball. This is good work from White, great work. Yeah, the blue defense is doing so well to keep them out. They're not making it easy. They are making it difficult. They are sliding. They are keeping on their men. White are trying to find that inside look, exactly where they want to go. Again, credit to them. They're being patient. They're not they were not trying to force anything. They were looking for a good look. An unfortunate slip there and a turnover. And we might see another fast break goal. And we do. That's two fast break goals on the bounce for the Fat Cats. And that's got to be heartbreaking for the Wolves. No, and it, it, it's so frustrating. And it, it just takes the wind out of your sails when that's not anybody's fault. Anybody can slip. Anybody can fall. But to have a team that can take any mistake purposeful or not again I'm, I'm not going to criticize anybody for falling down but to have that result in a goal against you is such a heartbreaker and again it just builds this you know this idea that we have to play a perfect game you start getting nervous and then the mistakes compound and all of a sudden we have a you know a pretty lopsided game so for their ability to execute on the mistakes is second to none and it's why they're I would argue the best team here yeah and you got to argue they're going to fear that now when when you've had your last two fast breaks are a goal and not just a goal but so quickly as well we barely blink and the ball's gone from the halfway line to the goal and it's in that's just you you start to fear that and you know and it's like you say you start to get a bit more nervous you worry about making those mistakes and they really need to just calm their heads appreciate they have the skill to get back in this game and try to make something happen. We've got a great shot, and they're doing just that. He has just bodied his defender out of the way. Number one for the LCC Wolves, scores an incredible individual goal. What an absolute unit that man is. And that is why I love this game of lacrosse, because whatever skill set you have, you can use to your advantage. A lot of quick, a lot of stick skills, a lot of this, a lot of that. But number one for the Wolves says, you know what? Uh, I'm bigger and stronger, and I weigh more than everybody, and I'm going to get going north-south. I am going to be a locomotive. Get out of the way of the tracks. He truck sticks someone and went and scored a goal. That's what I love about this game is anything that you have, whether you're quick, shifty, big, small, little, bad, good, 
you can take to your advantage as we just saw. Absolutely, and it's, it's what we do love about this game. It's such a variety of people. You know, anyone can get involved and play. There is, you know, a space for everyone on every team. That guy just went fucking choo-choo. He bodied his man. He scored a goal. It was wonderful. There was a great save there from White just now. And White now have the ball. I gotta Again, say, and this White goaltender has been playing really really well i've seen some very interesting shots whether it was that right there on the doorstep or even twister shots which a lot of goalies aren't accustomed to seeing he has stepped up to the task he really has he's done well. a bit unfortunate you know the fast breaks there's really not much he can do about it um you know so you can't criticize him for those goals because there's not much he can do there's two minutes left now in this half wolves oh that's such a good look i mean you're right in front of the crease such a good chance but sometimes they just don't come off and it didn't that time but they keep the ball and they keep it going and now they're really starting to apply some pressure onto the fat cats and it's just really good box action two-man game these lefties are lethal and you can't give them their strong hands so again it's taking away what makes it easier for white if they're a left-handed player listen they can play a two-man game you can't get beat to the middle of the field as we just saw because if they get to the middle field that easily it's going to be a goal every time I mean, and that was a great shot. I mean, he didn't even have his hands that free. It was almost a pivot shot right into the bottom right. He was just leaning on, on his defender and still gets the shot off with power. It was, a, it was almost a pivot. You know, it wasn't like your traditional time and room ripping it. He just generated power through the leverage of his stick, through the leverage, and a, a great finish. And now we're tied at three apiece. It is three all. And Wolves win the face off. Another slip. There must be a lot of bananas on the pitch yeah, today. I was gonna say, I it's, it's like someone's been playing Mario Kart. So whip. Oh, no. But it's still a loose ball. And we've got a whistle. It was, it was a slip. And, and unfortunately, it looks like this player for the Fat Cats, as he made his approach to the, uh, the Wolves player, that's when the slip happened. And that's one of the worst things that can happen. And, and we hope that he's okay. But... When you slip into somebody, you can expect contact shoulder to shoulder, but when that slip happens, there's there's a high likelihood, or at least a higher likelihood of, you know, a rolled ankle or a, or a lower body injury. So we hope that that momentum leading from expecting maybe a ground ball and then getting his ankle rolled up on, we hope that he's okay. Um, and and looks like he's getting off on his own power. Hopefully, he'll be able to uh, shake it off here soon. Yeah, he's limping off with the help of his teammates. A nice little, uh, we appreciate that, the, uh, the the handshake and the appreciation from the opposing player to say, uh, you know, always good, always good. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was not malicious. I think we're going for a reface here um, off of that because they stopped because of the injury. Uh, he does look like he's limping on his, his ankle, but I'm sure he'll be okay after a bit of rest. He's walking off on his yeah, own. he's walking off. He it, it, give him a bit of time. Give him beer. He'll be fine. You know, some some ibuprofen. But uh, we really appreciate oh, we the oh, yeah, we got a face off where there's no um, <laughs> where everyone was released, so anyone could be wherever they wanted to be, and we had a uh, everyone around the goal circle or around the centre circle, which is great. But there is a turnover, and the ball goes white. A very unique situation there, really. We don't see that very often. I don't know if the refs were just kind of winging it right there, but I love that, and that should be implemented further as we have 30 seconds left. Let's see if White can kind of sneak a, a lead going into halftime. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're really building some momentum, so they might make something happen here. They're swinging it back to the top, number five. He might be looking for a dodge. He does, he splits, beat his man, draws a check. Somehow no flag, but they keep the ball. Oh, ball goes blue. And he just launches it, trying to keep the ball. Oh. Kept the ball on a turnover, but it is huh? oh. half time. And what it, a game. A tight all. game. And I got to say, this, this has been awesome to watch because, again, we get a little bit of everything. We get the box flare from the white. We get the stick skills from the blue. We get good face-offs, good defense, everything like that. And and I'll even say this this is another interesting matchup where we see the box skills from white translate very well. But we've seen from Blue almost just like, hey, the way that we're going to play is we're going to take care and, and, and execute on their mistakes. I haven't seen crazy impressive things from their structured offense. So it's, it's been a great matchup so far, and we've really seen a momentum shift. At first, it looked like Fat Cats were 
really in control of this game, but Wolves are really getting back in it. So I think at this point, it's anyone's game. It's tied, it's three all. Who knows what can happen now? And I really hope it goes all the way. I did too. We're going to uh, take just a tiny bit of a break, 30, 45 seconds. We'll come back with some more analysis right after this. Worth calling out, something that's interesting about this matchup is the captain of the Fat Cats, Brian Whitmer, is actually the coach of the Wolves. So as far as understanding your opponents, we have, uh, you know, not a secret agent, but we have someone that knows both of these teams extremely well, both as a captain of the Fat Cats and as a coach of the Wolves. Again, that's Brian Whitmer. And what's interesting is I don't know how much he's given on the scout. I can't speak to anything like that. But as far as understanding your opponent, I would give the advantage to the Fat Cats. I feel like they've been able to play defense that's been effective against the box-style offense, uh, keeping in mind that a lot of these guys play for the Czech Republic box national team. Um, he's done some fantastic things to the sport, as we see a, a bit of an interesting face-off uh, off white and it's going to be going blue ball. I see an opportunity to push coming up, crossing midfield. And there's a flag, which I would say is a relatively interesting call. I am always quick to criticize a referee. I have no problem doing it. However, oh, it's an offside. It's not a slash. Okay, thank goodness. Because if that was a slash call, I would have said that that's a little bit too soft. But a really interesting man-up opportunity for the Fat Cats coming off of halftime. And I would say as a team that should think that they deserve uh, at least a lead right now, but they have a great opportunity to, uh, to solidify that lead with the man-up opportunity. Absolutely. And this could be a real momentum shifter. If they take advantage of this, it could really turn the tide in this game. Because every step before, the Wolves were really looking like they were taking control. But with a man down, if they get a goal with this, it could really change the game. Well, Let's see what they do. What's interesting too is we've seen them capitalize on uh, you know transition opportunities, whether it's a four on three. You know this is a glorified four on three. It's a six on five. So their stick movement might lead to a goal here, as we've seen earlier, or not. No, we get a turnover. They go for the skip pass. It's a good look. He's trying to find that guy on the back, on the back post. You know, if he gets that, that's a, a great opportunity. But. It doesn't come off, they take the risk, it doesn't come off, and they get a turnover. And throwing off of your back foot, again, I can't speak enough to how, oh, as we have a turnover. But let's see, this red helmet player right here, Ben Nisker, threw that skip pass off of his back foot. Does he find redemption? Yes, he does. They do, and again, the fat cat showing how absolutely lethal they are on those fast breaks. You cannot give them a turnover. You cannot give them a fast break. It's almost like you can't give the ball away to them because they will score on every opportunity. Well, they, they thrive in that 10 seconds after a turnover while the Wolves are unsettled, while they're trying to figure out what their matchups are, what their assignments are. It's really, really frustrating to get goals scored on you in those situations. So what they can do is, again, almost like I was just talking about Ben Niskern throwing off of his back foot. Your stick is as good as your feet. Make sure that you are stepping into your pass. Make sure that your momentum running with your body is taking you towards the player that you're trying to throw a pass to. Don't throw off of your back foot to a player running away from you. Throw off of your front foot running towards the player that you're passing the ball. Absolutely. There's, there's so many little elements to, to lacrosse that we love, and footwork is one of them. But again, straight off the face, a great save. He sticks his feet out keeps the ball out and they didn't back it up ball stays blue so the save from the goalie even leads to a turnover and blue get the ball again and let's see if they can bring it up the field it's a slightly sloppy possibly could have caught that but must be distracted by this beautiful architecture that we have here in split <laughs> 
So now Boy, White, White continued to bowl. A rare, about, I'd say, 30 seconds of sloppiness right there. Um, so <laughs> let's see if they dial it back in. But that was uh, that was interesting. Yeah, it was sloppy from White not to have the backup. You know, you really cannot forgive the backup. Your attackmen have to be on it. You have to be on point and ready for a shot. And they trying to get a low for low, but the goalie sees it coming all the way. And the defenseman did a good job of getting his stick in the lane right there as watch out for this transition. We know how lethal it's been. Yeah, and they're passing it one off. Uh, it's, it's dropped this time, but they keep it. So maybe they'll settle. And they do. He slows down. You see, he puts his hand out. He says, hey, let's slow down. Let's keep the ball. We're doing fine. Although there's a free man there, but he goes for the shot anyway. I'm surprised he didn't take the pass. He went for the shot, but there was a man completely unmarked because Wolves were benching while they were in defense. Honestly, a decent job by number six on the Wolves right there defensively. He knew that he had a two-on-one that was wide open. And instead of just sprinting right at the ball carrier, leaving a one-on-none, he said, listen, I will choose to have you take that shot. I think that's a higher percentage. Uh, yeah. Looks like we have a ball change. Yeah, it's because we use a white ball in men's and a yellow ball in women's. And he picked up a yellow ball from the end line because here we are Put him in using, jail. yeah, oh, oh, that's what happens in a tournament when you have women's and men's and you have different ball colors, we have different balls in the end lines and they picked up the wrong ball. But a great spot from the, uh, the referee, Ryan Wallace there to make sure we got the right ball color. We wouldn't want, we wouldn't want the wrong color to ruin this game, would we? God forbid, God forbid. Yeah. That would be an absolute disaster and a stain on our great game. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> But uh, White now have a settled, settled possession. They're keeping the ball. They're making stuff work. Everyone is moving. There is not a single person standing still. And I think that is the biggest difference between the higher levels of lacrosse is that you don't get feet stuck in the ground. People are always moving. People are always making things happen. And they're respecting, uh, you know, who has the ball, right? So, so number 20 right here, clearly a left-handed player. Look at how much free space he has if he were to run to his left hand. As the field rules and box rules are different, every time a box player sets a pick and field, it's called a moving pick. Well, yes. So he, he did not set himself. He basically just ran into the player, didn't stop, and yeah, That's one we of the got a moving pick. Box, yeah, set those halfway moving picks. I know that a lot of Americans, first time they play box, they say, "Hey, what was that? That's a moving pick." And you know, a lot of times it's a Canadian saying, "Hey, listen, you idiot American, that's not how we play." Yeah, that's the, one of the key differences, and it can be hard to separate, you know, your brain from the different uh, games that you're playing with the cross of the different rules. But as you said, in box. You can do a lot more. You can hit harder. You can be more physical, and you just cannot get away with that in field. It's a beautiful yeah. game, and it, and it provides the stick skills for some of the incredible goals that we've seen today. Again, you called it out earlier, where those low angle shots—they do such a good job getting their stick in front and improving their angle—that that is uh, one of the beautiful things that you learn better than any field player. As we see a great ride from Blue, that box still turns. Exactly, and it's, it's the limitations on certain rules that make you a better player. And a great shot and a great save from White, but the ball goes up in the air. It's still on the ground. White, get it up, but it goes straight back to Blue. And then we have a flag. Our goal! Back cut with a goal. And they extend their lead. And I think we might still see the foul. I think it was a personal. It looked like a cross check. What an incredible series of events we saw there. We saw an original, a, a great look that was stepped up by the Wolves goalie who made an incredible save. However, off of that rebound, the Fat Cats got the ball, moved it quickly. And again, I'd like to call out that as soon as you get that ground ball, you move it quickly, good things are going to happen. We found a left-handed player who not only drew a foul, but was able to execute, so we have a full, that foul is gone because the goal was scored, and now it is a live face-off with a two-goal lead for the Fat Cats. It was a technical foul, so that got oh, wiped. Yeah. It was not a cross-check. And we have an illegal procedure, and ball goes blue, and that is not good for Wolves. They needed an opportunity to get the ball in their sticks and make something happen. But on that, going back to that goal, it was like times to still when White got the ball. They didn't seem to know what to do with it on the clear, and they just allowed themselves to get checked, get, you know, to lose the ball and 
as we've seen again and again today, no mercy from the Fat Cats when it comes to a quick turnover goal. Well, and it's, uh, it's tough because that all stems from communication. If, if someone in the ride is getting double teamed or even triple teamed like we saw, you need to say, hey, I'm open, I got your help. And, uh, and that wasn't prevalent and that little mistake is, uh, has led to a two goal lead. Yeah. And it's these little mistakes across the game that, that are really counting here. It's a tight game, even though there's a two goal differential. Across the game, you have to say Wolves have probably made more mistakes, and that is what's costing them. And a great little dodge here, dangling, goes for the, the shot, but the goalie makes a great save, and now we've got a ground ball. See if Blue can pick it up. And they do. This Wolves goalie is playing really, really well. Those are not easy stops, especially when you don't know if they're going high or low. But he is tracking the stick really well on those low angle opportunities that Canadians or even box style players are so adept at. So very much credit to this Wolves goalie for keeping uh, keeping him and his team in the game. That was an actually, you know, an incredible save. The speed at which he got his stick down to the floor to make that save. You know, it takes a lot of skill, but. Blue still manages to dodge through what looked like a double team and just get a fairly straightforward goal, really. Well, it's, it, it's so tough as we hit the five minute warning here because when you have good enough stick skills, that double needs to arrive at the body. You can't just, you know, in, in other games and against other teams, you can just throw your stick out there, maybe slide, with, maybe make some contact with your elbow. But when you see a box player really tuck his stick towards himself and lean in to be running through your stick check or your elbow check, he is going to do that 100 times out of 100. So those slide decisions are so difficult because you're saying, listen, I need to completely stop your momentum as we see something that I'm not sure what happened, we'll find out. So I think we had a stick check oh my on the goal scorer and his pocket was too deep, which means that the goal is ruled out and the ball goes white. An incredible call. And you have to say a great call because if you notice that before and you hold that in your pocket, that's a great time to pull it out. You know, when they score, you call a stick check. You know, that's what some people would say. I would say that anytime you call a stick check in the tournament that's serving beer, you're a coward. But, you know, hey, listen, you, you, you got to win. You got to win in, in some way. I just will never, ever condone uh, stick checks. So, I mean, that's, if you're going to do it in play. a beer tournament, it'd be in the final. It'd exactly. Be but, uh, wow, I mean, again. Those little advantages, a, a deep pocket, those checks, the ball didn't come out, you get that advantage. So they're playing by the rules, they've called it, and it's worked out for them. But as you say, in a bit of tournament, we tend to let certain things like that slide. Yeah, yeah. We're here to have fun and we're here to enjoy ourselves. You encourage illegal pockets at times like these. This isn't, you know, well, I, would, what, I do, I would, I absolutely. <laughs> No, but you know, not San Diego, not the World Games, not the World Championships. Uh, let, let the boys, let the boys play, ref. Let the boys play is should be the motto of every European tournament, and I think it is the unofficial motto because that's what it's all about. It's about getting everyone to play, everyone here having fun. But this is a intense, tight game. We go low to low, but come from defender, and it bounces back. It won't be over and back if it does go over because it was off a shot, and the ref said have made that call correctly but it looks like there might be a push and a good time out by blue right there they had possession for a split second and called that immediately with a three minute warning and a two goal lead uh definitely a time where you can try and kill some clock and boy let me tell you they have the stick skills to do just that absolutely you know it's gonna be really tough for wolves to get back in this now only a few, few minutes to play there's two goals down they're gonna have to really change something up because at the moment, they just don't seem to have anything to match what the Fat Cats are bringing. You know, they're, they're really... It started out even, but as the game has gone on, they look like they're running out of ideas. And a, a really great call, as you say, by the, by the Fat Cats to make that timeout in the split second that you have to make that call when you're in possession. I, you know, and it, it's one of those things where... 
having capitalized on mistakes and that being part of an identity of your team and certainly a theme of the game, you know how important it is to avoid making those same mistakes that you would let the Wolves capitalize on. You need to know like, hey, remember how we got here? We scored two goals off of, you know, some missed passes, some things like that. Let's make sure that we don't give them the opportunity to do that on us. Yeah, and that's probably what they've been talking about in uh, in their timeout team talk just now. They're probably saying to each other, hey, let's calm it down, we're ahead, let's keep the ball now and go for those high percentages. And you get that luxury. When you're ahead, you do get that luxury. We got an illegal procedure somehow. What was that? It was too many men on blue is what I heard the referee say. I didn't see the exact structure, but what a mistake, a crucial coaching error that that made this game a lot more interesting. Yeah, that's got to be tough on them. They've just called the timeout. They're saying, hey, we've got the ball. Don't worry. And then they've lost it straight away. That's going to, you know, put a spanner in the works for them. So we'll see if they can just keep the Wolves out now because the Wolves are on the attack. It looks like they might be drawing a foul here. There's got to be a flag somewhere, but it's not. They're letting the boys play. The Blue have got the ball, but they've got to get it out now. It is an absolute crowd in that corner. White shirts everywhere. It goes to the goalie, and now they can slow it down. He just launches it. There's whistles. And White goes into the box for a slash. Got to say, that's an interesting call because to me it looked like 29 on White was the one that got slashed originally and he was just getting, you know, I don't, I don't even want to say retaliation. I would just say that that was even. So, you know, I'm going to say it. That's an interesting call that I would, uh, I would disagree with. Yeah, it's unfortunate for the Wolves. The last time they need, you know, the last thing they need right now is to go a man down when they're trying to get back into the game. There's two minutes, five seconds left on the clock and the Blues have the, you know, the Blues have the ball. They're just going to keep hold of it. They're not even going to go for goal. They are wide on the pitch, using the space. They don't need to go in deep. They are two goals up. A shot could turn it, cause a turnover, but they're going to go for it anyway. The goalie makes a good save and comes up with it. This white goalie has been very, very impressive. Let's see if we can get a clear on a bad right here. Yeah, it's a high pass, though. And it looks like that's going to be another turnover. And again, white just not having that extra extra edge that extra something that the fact that you've been bringing and it's tough man down too because you know you, you need to take a chance the, the goalies the goalies getting pressure and you kind of just got to huck it and pray we call that a duck and chuck uh so you know unfortunate that that penalty was called because it did really change the uh you know the outcome of this game as we see a potential turnover ah uh, no nope, never mind it was almost it was, it was very good from the uh defender he kept the stick in the passing lane didn't allow it to be an easy pass even though there was you know they still kept the ball he didn't give them an easy look that could have led to a, a shooting opportunity and now we even see the white come up with the ball so he prevented the easy opportunity forced them to go the long way around and now they come up with the ball and let's see if something happens here as everybody is in our way and shot goes just wide last 30 seconds of this game and it looks like it might just be all over it's gonna be very difficult blue are just gonna keep the ball there slowing it right down he's just walking the dark as he keeps the ball in the corner and that's the time and the winners of the 2022 dalmatia cup the fat cup and credit to them, I mean, I, I, we've said it time and time again throughout the course of this game, but they took advantage of the mistakes that were made by the Wolves. And, and not many teams can do that to the level that they did. You know, again, you can drop a good play, you can drop a good plan, but to make sure that you're capitalizing on the other team's mistakes will always, always win you a game. Absolutely. And it really came down to those fast breaks, those transition plays. 
were to a level I don't think I've ever seen a team do so well. They executed every fast break with such precision. It was goal, goal, goal. You know, any transition you almost expected them to score. And if we expect them to score, you know that the Wolves would also have been would have been worried by that constant threat of a turnover. And ultimately it's probably what led to a defeat. And, you know, I, I would say that it comes down to any time you execute fast breaks well, capitalize on the opponent's mistakes. It's just a decision making. Like these are smart, high IQ players. They have the stick skills to match their IQ. And honestly, you, you roll that up, you bundle all of that up into a team that's going to grow and execute and have the stick skills and the IQ and play together. It's, uh, it's certainly no surprise that they're the champions here today. Yeah, and you've got to say, it's been a great game. Two very, very good teams. Uh, you know, one of the highest levels of lacrosse. Great stick skills, great athleticism, great hustle from both teams. But ultimately, it was that decision making and those little moments that led to that win today. And again, just the, the flavor of big athletic dodges, sneaky inside stick skills, good, robust defense, goalies, two goalies that played fantastic. Honestly, that was a uh, that was a pleasure to watch. That was, that was a treat. That was a treat. It was a real treat. And go remember, you know, the Wolves were the winners this time last year, and they're going to be disappointed. You know, they are. You can see on their faces they are gutted that they have not come away with a win. They would have been. They would have fancied their chances. They would have known it had been tough. But ultimately, they just couldn't get it going today. And there was a real sense that almost both teams. It wasn't flowing as smoothly as it could have, but that's also perhaps a sense of how good the, def the, the defense was and the offense was on both teams, that it was very difficult to make anything happen against such good teams. Well, and it's, uh, you know, if, if you were to go back and watch a film as a Wolves player or coach, you know, I, I think that it simply is a matter of decision making, and that's that's something that as a coach like yeah you get frustrated by it's you, you never like to lose but it's nice knowing that like hey this is a tournament we can win it's not something that was out of our reach because we're not talented not athletic not good enough it just comes down to those three or four scenarios in which there was a bad pass um you know even we saw uh we saw the fact that score off of a slip you can't get rid of slips but those two or three other